What's the purpose of a character's death in a story? Ooh, good question. What is the character's death? What does that do for the story? What is the purpose of that? Well, death magnifies. Death uh, elevates a story. Uh, and I would say um, in your cast of characters, death should be one of the characters who comes around, who threatens, um, or who actually steps on stage and deals out death to someone, you know, like the figure of death with the scythe and the hood uh, that uh, we see in cartoons all the time. Um, yeah, that uh, is an, an important and I think even mandatory element to have in a story. And I don't mean that literally, necessarily, although it's great if it's there as a threat or an actuality. Um, but the possibility of death or failure uh, is the metaphorical way to look at it. That it's the death of, the possible death of your hopes, the possible death of your dreams. Um, that's, I think, operative in that uh, Cary Grant's notorious example that he's hoping uh, for uh, his belief in love to be restored, but he's really dubious about it because death got in the way in the past and uh, death is threatening now. So uh, there's a tension between those forces. But uh, the death of a character uh, may be the thing that makes it into a worthy story, that the hero uh, either dies or experiences death quite nearby. Uh, if someone near and dear to them dies or they are forced to deal death to someone else, that's a traumatic thing that sometimes can be quite a powerful uh, movement in a story. And uh, maybe they feel responsible or they uh, uh, blame themselves but uh, the death helps to uh, elevate the story and, and is almost a necessity in order to uh, really uh, shake the audience and, and communicate with them that this is quite a serious, it is a matter of life and death. Should death serve the plot or the themes or both? Well, yes, death should serve um, both the plot and the themes, it kind of uh, works almost in a mechanical way within the plot, but we haven't talked about themes much, but uh, the theme, uh, I think there should be one overriding theme in most stories. There can be multiple ideas, but uh, one basic human quality that you're exploring. and. Um, death should definitely lean over that and cast a shadow on whatever that human quality is. If you're talking about uh, brotherhood or loyalty or friendship or trust, um, that should be threatened. And you know that would be your theme is I'm going to talk today about ambition. Well, what if your ambition is thwarted by uh, death or failure? Uh, that would uh, add gravity to the, the story and uh, maybe shine some light on, uh, on the theme by testing it severely to the point of death. So uh, those things can all work together to make a, a nice design. What impact does the death of the hero have on other characters in the story? Oh, that's a great thing when the hero dies or appears to die, there is an impact on everybody else in the story. Uh, the great example that brought this to my attention as a young film student, when I was looking for the hidden rules and had just found them in the work of Joseph Campbell. So there's the whole pattern. Um, then I went to see the first Star Wars movie, which came out within a few days after reading Campbell for the first time. And by golly, there everything was. But in uh, the critical scene, in the middle of that movie, that corresponds for me to the ordeal, stage eight in my frame, 
um, is that they're in this giant trash masher thing at the bottom of the Death Star, and Luke Skywalker, our hero, is pulled under by something with tentacles and appears to uh, have died. Not for long, but for just a few frames, you see bubbles come up and then no bubbles. The water goes flat. And then the attention turns away from him to all the other characters who are watching. And they are freaking out because they think the evidence is telling them Master Luke is dead. Uh, he's been pulled to his death. And so they're all thinking, how am I going to go on and who's going to be the hero now? And I, sitting in the audience, am one with them, wondering if I'm not Luke Skywalker anymore, who am I? In this movie. I identified with him. I'm going through the story wanting what he wants, and now if he's dead, who am I? So there was this sense of unease and uh, a sense that something's been pulled out of the design, and it creates a vacuum. And I think that's uh, embedded in um, a lot of ancient rituals uh, that go back to the Stone Age times when to escape from the uh, ice sheets, from the glaciers, we had to go into caves in Europe. Uh, they acted out these kind of scenes where uh, the shaman or the leader of the ceremony would take on the robes of a buffalo or something and would dance around and then would seem to die. It's, it's like built in, it's like baked into uh, ritual uh, performances that uh, you will enact the life of the characters of, of these supernatural forces like the buffalo spirit or something like that, but also their death. And the audience uh, is programmed or trained to react by crying, uh, by you know, holding themselves tight and worrying, oh, what's going to happen to us now that we don't have a hero to protect us? Uh, they gather around the sort of pit where the hero has fallen in uh, and are deeply affected by it and depressed. And this is part of the magic of the hero's journey is that then that figure, the robed uh, shaman who's playing the role of the buffalo or Luke Skywalker comes back to life, sort of defying our expectations and our understanding of death is permanent. Uh, so if someone appears to die, they're dead. And then they come back again? Wow. We get a supernatural boost from that. It gives us a lift. And this is sort of the inner mechanism of uh, all stories, I think, and all religious rituals and all kind of performances of, of any kind uh, is to take you to that edge, let you experience that for a few moments, and then bring life back into the picture, uh, and it transforms you. It, you don't come back to the same level. It's like if you took a basketball and pushed it down under the water, um, it's resisting you. It wants to come back up to the surface. And if you just suddenly let go of it, it doesn't just bob up to the surface, it actually flies up out of the water. So the same thing is happening with human emotions, that when you depress them by apparently killing the hero, by making me think the hero has died, um, the audience's emotions are temporarily depressed, and they'll go along with it even though they know I've seen the movie before, and I know Luke Skywalker doesn't die here. He's going to live, but just for that second, part of you on this cave person level experiences it as if it were real and feels all the things that you would feel if someone dear to you had died. So then they're brought back to life, and there's this huge rush. Uh, and, and there's a lift. And this can be done a number of times in the course of a story. Should be, I think, somewhere in the middle, uh, and then certainly just before the end, we replay this at stage uh, 8 and stage 11, uh, where the hero is resurrected. And, uh, you know, the art of the 
storyteller and the filmmaker is to make the death as convincing as possible or to make the failure as convincing as possible and then turn it so that the hero wins. And we get so much more satisfaction out of that than we would if the hero just did the things and won. Uh, if they did the things and fell into a pit and almost died or seemed to die, to all appearances they've died, and then they crawl out alive, that's a tremendously more powerful experience than just, you know, uh, doing some task and succeeding. So I, I think the death serves to uh, involve the audience because uh, they're all, you know, existentially concerned about their own death. So anytime you show me one on, on screen, uh, part of me is studying that quite closely to see what's it going to be like for me. And maybe there's hope that I can live through it and uh, live again. Is there such a thing as a hero's death or a villain's death? Yeah, there's, there is uh, uh, room for the hero's death uh, and for the villain's death. Um, in these designs, uh, this is uh, something you can trace this back all the way to the beginnings of storytelling. If you want to go back in, let's say, Anglo-Saxon literature, you can look at Beowulf. Uh, Beowulf was this great uh, warrior hero who fought monsters. Uh, he fought one monster, uh, battled with this thing, tore its arm off. Uh, and then uh, had to fight its mother, who came to get revenge, uh, and then defeated that one and lived a long time ruling over uh, his people and uh, having prosperity and good times, but in the end had to face one more monster. And there comes a dragon that uh, is, uh, it's a terrific battle, but in the end, they both go down in flames. And so the hero dies in sacrifice. And that's a, a common way for uh, the death of a hero to be experienced. It can be experienced tragically. Uh, there's certainly lots of room for that in many, many stories that end with the tragic death of the hero. And maybe it's meaningless. Uh, and that itself is a sad thing, that you died for nothing. but. There are other cases where uh, the hero's sacrifice is meaningful and it was done to save others or to show some way that maybe I couldn't make it, but you can. Uh, this is kind of the idea in the Bible where Moses gets to the edge of the promised land and he's within sight of it, but he's just too old. And so he says, you go on to the promised land and I'm just going to camp out here and watch you all go, and I'll wave goodbye, and we know he, he dies soon after. So uh, the hero sometimes is handing it off and uh, leaving it for others to finish. And that's a noble death, when the hero sacrifices something or gives it over to the next generation. Uh, as for the villains, uh, the villain's death is a different kind of satisfaction. Uh, there is a thing called poetic justice, which means that whatever the hero or the villain did, they should be rewarded or punished in a way that matches poetically to what they did. So if the hero did something dangerous and wonderful to save the world, they should be rewarded with love, with uh, the crown, you know, with being king, with uh, some kind of uh, prize, uh, some kind of victory. And uh, if they have failed, if they have uh, broken the rules of the gods or have uh, let themselves down and let the others down, then it's a tragic kind of thing. But for the villains, there should be this poetic justice so that whatever evil thing they did to the hero, the same should be done to them. Uh, a beautiful example of this is in The Wizard of Oz, where Dorothy deals with this wicked witch who's already set her straw man friend on fire uh, and is threatening to kill her and her dog and everybody in the team. And uh, Dorothy does an act of mercy. 
she takes a bucket of water and throws it on the, on, on the scarecrow and puts out that fire. But some of the water goes on and splashes the witch and Dorothy doesn't know this, but the witch is in the book, she's, it says she's made of sugar and that she just dissolves and goes down into the floor uh, crying out, you know, oh, my wonderful wickedness is, is over. And uh, so the villain's death gives us a satisfaction that it sort of corrects the imbalance. The villain represents an imbalance in society and the hero is trying to bring things back to a, a state of balance, to a state of justice. And so it might be necessary to uh, uh, punish the villain in accordance with what they did. It's very unsatisfying if they get away with something and uh, don't have to pay uh, an appropriate price for what they did. Uh, audiences on some level just instinctively know that's not a happy or satisfying ending.